Hey my babies, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Raya J and I'm back with another video. Today is Thursday my babies. I hope all is well with you all, all is well with me. And I hope we all are continuing to stay about happiness, peace, and love. And I hope we all are continuing to stay determined, motivated, and focused. And I hope we all are continuing to walk in the alignment of stars that Allah has for us. So in today's video, you already know what I am going to be discussing because you read the title, you clicked on the video, so you already know what's going on. This video is strictly for parents and teachers. I repeat, although my daughter's here, <laughs> it's fine. We're not going to be talking vulgar or explicit or anything like that. Um, she's of age. I talk to my daughter in this type of language. We have discussions, so it's pretty healthy and okay for my eight-year-old to be in the video with me. Um, again, this video is strictly for my parents out there and the teachers all over the world. So let's get it started. So this video, I'm going to be discussing how to maintain your child's mental health throughout this COVID-19 pandemic. And... And I just want to start off by giving a hug, a hug, a warm hug to all of the parents out here who are literally going through so much, you know, with all the changes that are um, happening in the world and we are currently experiencing and living through. And shout out to the teachers. I know that it is not hard. I know that it is not some easy. Some of y'all are going to be getting dragged in this video. Um, this is a safe space and feel free to leave, leave all you guys' comments below. I, I'm an open person whether you agree or disagree with me. Um, this is my platform and again, we can, we can converse down below. So I want to start off by saying that this time is not only very hard for parents out in the world. This, this, this time is not only hard for teachers but it is also hard for our children you know and children all over the world you know children are literally suffering from stress anxiety depression some children are suicidal you don't know what children are going through uh behind the walls of their home and you know every day parents we are doing the best that we can you know we now have to adjust to doing this remote learning thing which means basically homeschooling <laughs> that we never really signed up for i know i didn't sign up to homeschool my child but because of covid19 and this pandemic that we are in we have to you know and i do want to touch on before i go any further i do want to touch on um recently y'all know it has been back to school you know september when did the kids officially go back like september 21st or something like that um and they went back i signed up in the summer to do full remote learning so i don't want my daughter to go to the school building to receive her education because i just feel like you know safety and health is everything for me and I just decided that for my family, my daughter, for me and my household. And you may have decided to let your child go experience back into, you know, go experience regular schooling, which is back in the school building. Because they did open up the school buildings eventually. And, um... It's crazy because I literally just went to my daughter's school because I needed to just get like um, some paperwork really quickly. And I didn't know, I didn't know like what, what, what other changes were made in effect this, um, like a few days ago when I went to go get um, some paperwork. And I went to the school and you know, me just, like I said, I haven't been watching the news. You know, the news is very depressing for me at this point in my life. I don't, even if it's on the TV, I'm not really engaged as I used to be. Um, like when March and, and April and May, you know, was here. Um, so I went into the school building and I'm like, hey, is anybody in the office? No, I walked in first and the security automatically was like, 
the school is closed. And I was like, well, I need to get paperwork. Is there anybody in the office? And again, I didn't know that these changes were made, right? So um, the security guard went to go check and I guess they told her to tell me, no, this building is closed. So I was like, okay, thank you, you know, and I left. Listen, not only did we make like our pri primary decisions before school started, like either you wanted to do full remote learning or you wanted to do um, the half and half, you know, your kids would go to the school building some days and then th the child would be home or the children will be home with the parents for the rest of the days. And now all of these children are um, fully remote learning and I, I don't want to be the person to say, like, I told you so. I knew this was going to happen. Um, <laughs> but, listen, I'm very blunt, but I am going to say it. Before school even started and before they even sent out the surveys to the parents and the emails, like, oh, what, do you, what option do you want for your child? I already had in my mind that I was not going to send my daughter to the school building to receive her education because... This virus is airborne. This virus is serious. And this virus this thrives virus in cold weather. Has caused a yearly pandemic throughout the entire world, not just here in America, everywhere. And this virus has has, you know, because of this virus, we are now living our new lives, you know? We're, we're gonna wear masks. We gotta continue to wash our hands. I mean, although we should have been doing that before this virus, but continue to wash your hands, continue to social distance. This virus is not going anywhere. Um, so, you know, now all these children are receiving homeschooling, remote learning, and, and I understand the pressure that it may put on the teachers. I understand, I'm a parent, so I understand like what us parents are going through. Like, can we just have a one-on-one -on -one parents? <laughs> Listen, I have a headache. I haven't washed my behind yet. And, and I have flare ups all over my face right now, AKA pimples. But I said, you know what? I gotta get this video done because this is what I gotta do, you know? I've been trying to make, I've been having this idea for this video in my mind for a few days now, and I've been putting it off. You know, I was, I was supposed to do it yesterday, I was supposed to do it the day before, but today I was like, you know what? You're gonna get this video done. Doesn't matter if you have a headache, doesn't matter if you didn't wash your behind yet, it doesn't matter if, you know, you have a, f a few flare ups on your face, it doesn't matter. I already did remote learning with my kid this morning. We already ate, you know, and, we already just had a bit of downtime. So I said, you know what? Let me just get this done. So listen, I know what I know what you're feeling. You know, you're feeling tired. You're feeling stressed. You're feeling, sometimes you're feeling confused. You know, this is tough for us because, again, we didn't sign up to be doing homeschooling with our children. We have, we have work to get to. We have errands to run. We have things to do. And now the school buildings are closed all of a sudden. When some of y'all, I have sympathy for some of y'all because y'all didn't sign up for this 100%. You know, y'all signed up to do this 50%. <laughs> so now you have to do it 100%. Can you get me a nap here? My nose is running. Um, And I know that it's, it's a lot of adjusting to, it's a lot of adjusting. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of hard work. And... Oh, God, it's just so much that's going on, you know. I just want you all to know, thank you, that all the parents, you know, I just want you all to know that you are not alone. I'm going through it as well. <laughs> and every day, I just try to take it a day at a time and put my best foot forward and be the best mom that I can be. Um, so, yeah, I just want you to know that we're here. You know, we got each other's back. I want to hug you because I, oh, I'm a hugger. <laughs> I'm a hugger. And, you know, her hugs fulfill me, oh, for the rest of my life. Her, her hugs are the best hugs. But I know how it feels to not be able to, like, you know, hug our girlfriends, our friends, you know, and just people that we know, you know, it's like, hey, girl. Yes, girl. Oh, I needed that hug. You know, sometimes people just needed needed a hug. 
sometimes people just needed to have that that one on one talk, that one on one personal time, you know, with each other. And I just want you all to know that I get it. I'm here with you all. I do want to touch on the teachers. I think this is mainly for the teachers, but I think the parents, you all can learn a thing or two, or I can just like broaden your horizons a little bit. You know, these children are doing remote learning and this is new, not only for us as the parents, it's not only new for the teachers, it's not, it, it, you know, it's also very new for the, for the students. And we have to keep in mind that these children, they are babies. I don't care what grade your child is in. I don't care if your child is in kindergarten, third grade, eighth grade, high, um, seniors in high school or in college. They're still considered babies, you know? And they are trying their best to get on these remote learnings and participate and learn and take down their notes and do all the things that is required of them but when we have some teachers that are not really focused on a child's mental health and their sole purpose because they feel like i'm a teacher so i'm just supposed to get on here and teach the, the, the students you know and you know sometimes students have a bad day don't we all excuse me I said, if you come in this video, you have to act appropriately, right? So some um, students have a bad day, like like grownups, you know? Some people are just, you know, some kids may just not be feeling it this day, you know? So they don't wanna participate as much, you know? But when we have some teachers that are saying about the students, oh, good job to all the students that are participating today you know it means that you want to learn and you want to uh be smarter and do better for those students who are not participating um you know i feel like that is inappropriate number one you are singling out one one group of children amongst a whole class i don't think that is right you know, you don't know what these children are going. This is where I'm, this is really where the seriousness of this video is about to come to play because you don't know what a student is going through in their house. You don't know what any child is going through in their mind. You know, some, some kids are stressed like adults and no, they shouldn't feel that way. They shouldn't even know what stress is, but unfortunately they do, you know? Some students have anxiety. Some people have, some students have social anxiety where they're literally shy. They don't want to get, first of all, they was already shy in the classroom and didn't want to participate because of their social anxiety. Um, and because of their, you know, them not being so sure of themselves, not so confident, not so secure. Um, so for them, to be demanding students to participate. Oh, this is a part of your grade. I get that. No parent wants their student to fail. No parent wants their their child to, um, I said student, <laughs> no parent wants their child to fail. No parent wants their child um, to not go on to the next grade and to get an A plus. You know, all I, I think I can attest for all parents around the world world that we we want our child to do good. You know that is not a that's not that's not a thing. Like I don't think nobody's praying. Please Lord, I want my child to get an F minus. I want my child to flunk all their classes and do the same grade again next year. No, come on, let's be realistic. You know, but when we have um, teachers that are on these these Google Meets and these Zoom um, these Zoom classes demanding that a child participate, I just don't think that is right. Um, I'm gonna put my hand up, and you all, like I said, if you agree with me or disagree, just feel free. We can have a conversation below in the comments. I'd rather my daughter have a healthy mental health than to be so worried about passing a grade or participating and ultimately 
my child will be suffering from anxiety, stress, depression. She'll be contemplating suicidal thoughts. I, I just think as a whole, parents, teachers, the school system, we all need to do better in regards to our children. I don't want my child to suffer with mental health at all, <laughs> at all, but let alone, you know, in her adult life where she is not able to grow up and be a great civilian and, a, and grow up to be a great person and just live a great life for herself and take care of herself. And, you know, because people who, you know, children who are younger and they deal with um, mental health issues, anxiety, stress, depression, uh, you don't know what they're going through in their household and you um, demand now, we're in this new era now of this visual we are not in classrooms we are not hugging we are not doing handshakes we are not kissing on cheeks and high-fiving we are not we are social distance due to a COVID-19 pandemic throughout the entire nation okay so I think we all have to do better as far as protecting our child's mental health <sighs> I, I'm just a huge advocate for mental health, you know, not only do I take care of my mental health and I literally try to remain a, per a, per a person that is only about happiness, peace and love, but I am pushing every damn day of my life to make sure that my kid is not struggling with her mental health. And I just want to give you all tips of how to cope with this with this COVID-19 pandemic that we are all living in for the sake of our children. Our children are the future, okay? No, and I'm not, and please do not twist my words. I am not saying that I want these children to fail, that I want them to flunk and repeat the same grade. No, I am saying let's stop focusing so much on a child if a child is participating or not and you know pressuring these children so much about schoolwork okay let's make sure the child attends the, the classes make sure the child does the work but once once the classes are attended and once the 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 work is finished let your child go do what your child wants to do Play with their toys, their video games. Watch a little uh, YouTube, okay? Jump around. Come on. Because if you are just solely pushing and pressuring and nagging and shouting and telling your child all day, every day, Monday through Friday, do your homework. Do this. Do that. Go clean your room. Stop it. There's that. Do you know that you would drive a child insane? Children, let me explain. Let me explain something to you all about children because my child is very smart. She's very advanced for her age. And it 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 it, it comes to play and it has a lot to do with the way that I've raised her, you know. I I I always want her to be advanced, you know, as far as her thinking. I want her to be 10 steps ahead. So, when it comes to that, Yes, they're children. I love my child. She's a child. She plays with toys. She watches Ryan on YouTube. We play Barbie dolls. We play slime. You know, we make content videos. A lot of things we do. We have a lot of uh, mommy and daughter quality time. Um, and we enjoy it because that's, that's just how we do. But I don't want my child. And I, and I make it a point. I make it a very... I hope that you all are understanding this video and getting my points across of what I'm really trying to say. Because I know that I can be all around, you know, with my words. <sighs> Once my child does her, her classes on Google Meets. Once my child has finished her assignments. At that point, my child is free to do whatever she wants to do. Play with her toys, watch TV, watch Ryan. Okay, if we want if she wants to go to the park, she say, "Mommy, I want to go to the park." We'll go to the park. We play um, Connect Four. 
in card matching games. We have, we do mug bags, okay? We eat together, we laugh together, we cry together, we watch movies, we talk, you know? I just wanna encourage you all to do the same thing with your children, you know? Stop breathing so much down their neck in regards to education. Yes, education is very important. Our children should always strive to be the best that they can be and do the best that they can do. And let's leave it there, you know? Don't be afraid to talk to your children. Um, every conversation you have with your child should not just be, go take a shower, go take out the trash, do your homework. This, that, that nagging and telling them what to do and what they're not doing. Um, let's let's take a minute to sit down with our children and get to know really who they are. You know, let's talk to them. How are you today? How was your day? No, really, how are you? You know, talk to me. It's okay. This is a safe space. You know, that is building your child's mental health because they won't be afraid to talk to you about how they feel honestly wholeheartedly and then talk to other people about their feelings you know and you want and you want them to have a a you know you want them to be strong and you want them to be confident you want them to know who they are it doesn't matter if they're in first second or third grade your child your child is very smart i'm telling you this your child is very smart talk to your child Build your child's mental health. Be there for your child, you know? If your child wants to talk to you, open up that, that safe space and hear them out. Don't just, don't just hear them. Actually listen to them. And when you're listening, don't cut into their time of, of talking and getting their, getting their feelings out. Let them talk. And then you respond. I hear you. So what I heard you say was dot, 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 and fill in the blanks of what you just heard them say. And don't, don't twist their words either. You know, actually hear what your child is saying. Actually know who your child is. You know, I know exactly who my daughter is because I talked to her. <laughs> I know I like the back of my head. I talked to her, you know, she has a safe space with me. You know, I want her to always come to me and talk to me about whatever, school, personal, whatever, you know, out my leg. Um, and she knows that this is a safe space. I don't, I would never judge my child. I would never shame my child, make my child feel guilty of mistakes. No, this is a safe space. I'm her mother and I just want to encourage all the parents and the teachers who are going to come across this video. To start protecting these children's mental health. It is imperative for them to have a healthy mental health. For them to grow up and be great human beings. And know what decisions to make in their lives. And them to know who they truly are. Inner. Their inner selves. You know, so they can be confident in who they are, you know, because if you're not taking care of a child's mental health, these children actually grow up to be bullies. You know, they grow up to um, wanting to hurt someone in their lives, you know, and it doesn't have to be physically, you know, abuse actually starts mentally, verbally, and then it increases to the next level if that person's brain <laughs> is telling them what to do next. Um, I hope I said everything that I needed to say in this video. This video, I didn't take any notes. You know, most of my videos, I don't take notes. It's really straight off the dome. And I just put my thoughts out into a content video in hopes that it'll reach the right people. So this is the end of the content video, my babies. I love you all so much. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all in my next video. Peace and love. Hugs. Love you. Mommy loves you. Bye.